Welcome all to this analysis and thank you very much for supporting this channel. Now, Mwaiki Baki was buried yesterday in his Odaya home and um, some two people were asking me a question about the fly whisk. Of course, I'll try to address it a bit. But in this video, um, I listened to Ray Lodinga's speech and after that speech, I referred to Riding on Tigers. That is the Moody Awards book. And find out a, a, a critical message that Moody Awards was delivering to Ray Lodinga as Mwai Kibaki actually was, was receiving the send-off. There are a lot of um, um, plackouts from Moody Awards that really applies to Raila Dinga's 2022 presidential bid. But before we look at that, let me just address a bit of the fly, fly whisk. So fly whisk is that nini in Raila Natumia Fanyevi. So he used to remember at Moe's burial, he used it, we were saying the Joey Joey. And what is it? Of course we've said this for many times. First, that fly whisk that Raila is using, he was given by Jaramogi Gingo Dinga. And if you've ever gone to Jaramogi Gingo Dinga Museum, there is one that is also there. Yeah, the one that Jaramogi, there are two. There is that one that Raila has, and there is one that uh, uh, is, is still there. I think that the other is just a copy. But you will actually, you will always be told the story of that fly whisk. Now, the fly whisk is a symbol of leadership. And when you see him um, uh, blowing it uh, in, uh, on top of the coffin, first it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's to show forgiveness. Kwamba, you know, Kibaki and Raila had their own differences when they were in government and all that. And that was the same to Raila and Moi then. You know the story of Raila and Moi. So that is first to show as a sign of forgiveness that I've forgiven you and that is just to appease the spirits. That is important. Number two, it is as a symbol of leadership of Luo. By the way, I get irritated by one Johnson Mudama because I don't see that I don't know why he uses that fly whisk. Someone from Kama may tell me whether he is an elder or king there. But let me tell you, in Woolland, it's only Raila who has a genuine fly whisk and the Luo Council of Elder Chairman. And there is also an elder I realized at um, Tom Boyer's uh, Museum. There is a politician from that place who hails from uh, Tom Boyer's clan who also has one. Yes, that, those are the three that personally I know. So the people that normally use that phrase, sometimes they misuse it. That is it. Uh, number three, uh, that fly whisk also uh, represents Jaramugi Gingo Dinga family. And the reason I told you is it was used by Jaramugi. And of course, it's a full, there is a full story about fly whisk in Lua land. And I cannot, exhort, I cannot exhaust everything. So people who use fly whisk just aimlessly, you need, you need to know the value of that stuff. Especially Johnston Mudama, uh, the former Machako senator. Now, Moody Wuri delivered Raila Dinga a critical advice as we head towards the August 9th general election. Now, before we look at that, if you're watching this video and you've not yet subscribed, kindly take a second and subscribe. Click the notification bell and also give us uh, your opinion on, especially on Raila Dinga's speech. Personally, I enjoy listening to Raila because of the storytelling. You know, Raila has, I think there is a, a resource, a historical resource that he has uh, that no one else amongst these politicians normally have. So personally, I really enjoy it. So you can also tell us about all those speeches. You're not going to look at that. But are you staying in Nairobi and its environs? Uh, that is Kiambu, Kitengela, or even within the spaces of Rwanda, Lavington, or, the, or any part of the country and you experience frequent blackouts. Don't look south. Huh? Look at Instalite Company. 
they have uh, packages on power backup systems ranging from 125,000 to 195,000 and it can go more depending on what exactly suits your need very interesting you need to check out on them then this is what i realize on power system this is the only company in kenya that can integrate your um solar with the power uh, with water heating system without buying a new equipment so you are not, you're not going to experience you're not going to have extra costs this is something that is very interesting but but then this can minimize your electricity bill to nearly zero hey that's an amazing now i want you to talk to them here to make sure that you can also book a session and just have an understanding on what exactly uh, this can help i was in the village and i can tell you that if you're putting up a structure in the up country then you need to think about solar <laughs> think about solar now talk to Gideon here at this number 0722818883 0722818883 then also my brother has a new song look at below the media amazing new song but it's a worship song so if you also love music check out his uh, youtube page straight Moody worry in his book riding on tiger tried to um, explain why uh, on some of the issues that I pointed out that I picked up to point out on what Riley can do or what Riley should do if he forms um, 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 I mean, uh, with, with the Azimio team because what I have realized is the Azimio arrangement is a replica of the 2002 NAC or Rainbow Coalition Rainbow Movement that is the, it is a replica of the same so one <clears throat> is shun betrayal of Azimio Council in 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 um, in in in, uh, in Moody what is saying that when Kibaki got power, the people that campaigned for Kibaki was a summit. Now, this summit was including Raila, Kalonzo, George Saitoti, Kijana Wamalwa, Charity Ngilu. Maybe, and Kijana Wamalwa. Yes, Kijana Wamalwa. I think also Mudia Wari. But he didn't play, he played a passive role. So, when, after they forming the government, you remember that famous MOU, it was betrayed because immediately Uru was, uh, Kibaki was sworn in, Kibaki experienced a third stroke. Kibaki had experienced three strokes, by the way. One in 1970s, there is another one in 1980s, and at that moment, his children actually were staying with Kenneth Matiba. Then immediately after um, he was sworn in 2002, he had another stroke, and that was because of he had spent more time in the wheelchair, so there was that blood clot. Huh? So So by that time he went, he was again taken back to Nairobi hospital. There was a cabal around him that surrounded him. Now that is the clique of people that Raila refers to saying that Kibaki, the reason why Kibaki betrayed the council was because of that clique of people. Then that team uh, that were around Kibaki is what and is the team that ensure that he was not going to work with the rest now These are the people that made decision at one point uh, Modi Awori was saying that Kibaki most trusted person in the summit was Charity Ngelo and then there was the status state house operative someone uh, Kareri I think Materi uh, if I get the name right uh, This is the guy that was later on uh, dismissed from state house because of personal difference with Mama Lucy Kibaki so they could not even allow the council members like Moody Awori was to go and and secure a meeting with him with Kibaki and this this could not happen that did not see the light of the day betrayal and that's where the seeds of the seeds of of of, of the 2007 post election started off the betrayal now one element that also came out is this eh? in the run up to 2002 general election Musalem Davidi was picked as a vice president from Western to bring Western votes on their ballot on to support Uhuru. But then what happened? Eh? Even the NAC side they decided that the position of vice president will go to Western. That is why uh, Kijana Wamalo was picked. And when Kijana Wamalo died in 2003, they had to go for Moody Awori. 
So that is it. That should be it. If if it was going to be rigid on uh, balance and this position goes to this place, then it should be on that. Now, number two reason is to avoid cannibalization by the state house deep state. Of course, their deep interest, and when someone in power, it's it's it's, it's a deep of it. Eh? Um, Muni Wari was saying that the reason why there was that deep state is because they later came to realize that this uh, Mount Kenya Mafia were the people that were also sponsoring uh, the campaigns. But then I also ask, uh, how could it be that the NAC summit did not sponsor the campaigns? Now, is why Raila was supposed to be Prime Minister and they decided no, they could not allow to be Raila as Prime Minister. Number three, or another aspect that uh, Moody Wari is also uh, saying in his book that Raila needs to pick is equal representation of the cabinet. By the way, um, and in this I support Uhuru's move in 2017 to break the protocol, uh, the agreement with Ruto, so that he could accommodate ac people across board. The seeds of this code started sowing in 2003. And, uh, and, and at some point, uh, um, what Kibaki did, Kibaki did representation because uh, he appointed even members uh, from the other parts in cabinet that were not even part of the campaign team. So that's what Uhuru did in 2017. If and, and if Uhuru and Ruto would have been together in 2017 and do cabinet appointments skewed on the two tribes, it would have brought that much of a discomfort amongst the other tribes. But the Uhuru now is attracting support from across the country because Everyone is represented in that cabinet, even though it might not be full, because that is questionable. But again, uh, you cannot take it away that he tried to bring everyone on board. So there's also the issue of embracing the handshake and consequent cons consensus in all situations. When Andrea mentioned about this at some point, that in the 2007 post-election uh, agreement, the deal where they were to share government 50-50, they agreed, they had a consensus with Raila, but there were people around President Mwai Kibaki that did not accept. Not even Mwai Kibaki, even Raila Odinga, Joho was on record saying that Ruto did not even want Raila to sit ground to handshake with Mwai Kibaki. And by there, we really wait to see where there is another handshake that will involve William Samuel Ruto. So, um, this, this is something that has to be embraced. And Raila is... In this, you can take to back. If Raila is to win the presidency, handshake with William Ruto will be a phone call away because he's actually posted himself as a peacemaker. So when I listened to this speech by this guy, I think he was invited by Jimmy to talk on behalf of, I think, his family. He talked about the handshake. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to listen to that bit here. You already showed us the way with your political handshake with the Right Honorable Raila Amolo Odinga, which led to the formation of the Grand Coalition Government of 2008 to 2012. His Excellency, President Uhuru Muigai Kenyatta, repeated the same some 10 years later in 2018 and proceeded to establish the Building Bridges Initiative with the Right Honorable Prime Minister my good friend, you both showed Kenyans that they can work together and prosper together, especially when they put their political differences aside. Yes, so that is what people expect. And ladies and gentlemen, you can also get to us and give us a feedback on this.